Got here one of the new 68 Custom Deluxe Reverbs from Fender. And like all 68 Customs, it's really noisy. Volume. Off. Volume. Off. Reverb. Off. Speed. Intensity. Off. Treble. Bass. Treble. Bass. Halfway up. This is the self noise. I'll show you why it does that in just a moment. Let's turn this thing around. As stupid as this cage is on this model, it's not as bad as the one they put on the 64 Custom. On the 64 Custom, the cage also protects the owner from ever being able to change the fuse without removing the rear panel. What the hell? All right, it's got a V-type selection, which is not a bad speaker at all, but the owner uh, provided a different speaker. We'll put that in. Has this awful black uh, molded plastic speaker cable. These things often fail. It will not be going home with this. Got the groove tubes labeled, fender labeled, GZ34. And output tubes. These are JJ's. And like most JJ's, these 6 v 6s are microphonic. Something in the chassis sounds like it might be microphonic as well. Rectifier tubes don't usually go microphonic, but I might be hearing it, it vibrating this one. V1, however, is gonna be very microphonic in the set. That's not part of the circuitry. That's just a bad tube in V1. The issue being that, oh, if you are on a gig, you're like, V1's microphonic. When you pull V1, so I don't have that microphonics, then because of the way this circuit is wired, v, V2, your reverb channel, your vibrato channel, will have half the gain that it would normally have. I'll show you why. Let me get this thing opened up. All right, on this one, I can see daylight between the front lip of this chassis and the top of the cabinet. But what often happens, and it's happening right here a little bit, is that the foil that's on the inside of this top surface sticks to the chassis. And as you try to pull the chassis out, the foil just rips. Right here, the foil is hanging down a little bit. Let me push it up. And I can see one little spot in that front left corner, left from our perspective now, it's front right corner when the app's in place. All right, that looks okay. If I needed to, I get a thin blade and work that in there. Let me pull this out. And remember, just dis disconnect the reverb cables. All right, so totally stock inside. And the primary cause of all those problems is this blue wire here and this missing capacitor here. Let me explain. Here I've drawn a simplified version of the channels and the channel mixing in a traditional Deluxe Reverb or any AB763 amp. So we've got channel one, the normal channel, just looking at what happens after its volume pot. And here we have channel two, the vibrato reverb channel traditionally, just looking at what happens after its volume pot. Each of these channels has an almost identical gain stage with V1B and V2B, they each have 100K plates. If you look at all this, you'll notice that all the part numbers correspond to the 65 reissue Deluxe Reverb schematic, which is the same schematic pretty much with a few exceptions as a 68 Custom. The boards are exactly the same. If you have a 68 Custom, you can make it back into the 65. If you have a 65, you can do the same mods to make it to the 68. Or if you stay tuned, you'll see something better to do. Crucially, V1B and V2B share a cathode here. So they have an 820 ohm cathode resistor bypass with a 22 microfarad, it was 25, and the old one's 22 is a modern version of that value. And um, they each have a coupling cap after that. Uh, the normal channel goes through C5, a 47 nanofarad. C12 here, the 22 nanofarad, is off the vibrato channel. And then it goes off to the reverb stuff and the reverb mixer, and I'm just simplifying that here. 
And then that goes through C18, this 100 nanofarad, and it has a 50K reverse audio pot, and that's where the vibrato is tied in through the, uh, the roach. And then this pair of mix resistors, 220K per side, which goes to the phase inverter. And so we are mixing AC here in the, in the traditional AB763 because there's no DC after this cap, C5, and there's no DC after C18, and there's no DC present here at R48. So we're just mixing AC, which is the better thing to mix. And because of the nature of the resistors making a voltage divider there, and then the voltage divider from C5's perspective going down to R40, through R48, uh, that uh, lowers the output of each channel a little bit, and that's the traditional fender balance that we're used to. And that's not what they do in the 68 Custom. Let me show you what they do in the 68 Custom. So they remove that 220K, which was R12, and they remove C5. Putting these here because we're going to need them in a little bit. I don't want to redraw them. And what they do instead is they just put a wire from plate to plate, from V1B's plate to V2B's plate. So the input of V1B comes in here, and it has its cathode stuff here, and it's got its plate resistor, and it's tied to the plate of V2B. And all the signal coming in here gets mixed with all the signal coming in here, and all that just goes through the, through the reverb, and from the reverb to the next stage, then through C18, gets the vibrato added, goes to the 220K resistor, which is just limiting current. It's not doing any voltage drop. There's no volume reduction. And then into the phase inverter. So simple. You take out that resistor. You take out that cap. You put that wire joining the plates. Simple, right? You have reverb and trim on both channels. Well, this has two major downsides. Number one, a DC mixer, because here they are mixing DC from the plate of V1B with the plate of V2B is the noisiest possible way to do the mix. And as you heard at the beginning of this video, it's a noisy amp, even with the channel volumes off and everything off, it just makes a very high noise floor. The other issue, which I alluded to, is if one of the tubes is pulled, and in the case of this amp on the bench, I pulled V1B. Well, what happens if we take out V1B? At that point, you have no signal coming from the inputs of channel one, but channel two, goes into V2B, and it has it's the cathode resistor all to itself, which would give more gain, right? Well, sadly, if you look at what's happening here, from the plate of V2B, this 100K plate resistor to the power node is in parallel with this other 100K resistor to the same power node, which is equivalent of having a 50K resistor. In general, when all other factors are the same, if you double the value of the resistor, on the plate, you are adding gain to this stage. If you have the value of the plate resistor, you're losing gain, you're decreasing gain. So you try to play a gig without V1 because it was microphonic. Well, V2 suddenly has half the gain that you expect it to have. That's not particularly good. So what do we do to have reverb and trim on both channels if we want that without having the DC mix, without having all the noise, and without having all these channels kind of crippled like this. Well, let me show you. We got a 220K here and a 220K here. So now we have the plates are separated from each other. V1B's plate is not tied to V2B's plate. They each have their own plate resistor. The gain of this tube does not change via the plate if this tube is pulled. The cathode difference is relatively minor, and it's in our favor either way. If you pull V2, V1B has a little bit more gain. If you pull V1, V2 has a little bit more gain. We have the coupling cap here and the coupling cap here, which means that when we mix, we're going to be mixing AC, so all the noise goes away. So we're going to add 220K resistors directly after these coupling caps. And we're going to go through the reverb circuit as normal and out of the reverb circuit, tie into the vibrato as normal. And we'll go through this 220K resistor, which you can just leave on the board. It just affects the current uh, behavior of the feel a little bit in a good way and goes to the phase inverter. 
but that can cause a minor problem where the gain of the amp at this point is a little bit too hot compared to the gain of a traditional fender. So what you do, uh, after you remember how the program works, is you put a new resistor here, and it's probably not going to be 220K. I'm going to put one meg in here for right now because that's the value you need to play around with. You still need to recreate that voltage divider that you had in the original circuit. But because there is a mixed stage here with the 220K, 220K, you are losing some gain at this point, so you don't have to lose as much here as you might think. But if you don't have that at all, you can have a little bit too much. When I make the actual changes to this amp, um, I haven't done this in a few months, and I don't know where in my notes. I have books and books of notes. You know, I've got all these notepads. Somewhere I've written down what I did, and I just don't remember what value. So it may end up being a 470K, maybe end up being a 1.5 meg. I don't remember. But a resistor here to ground from this junction, taking the place of the old R12, which was coming from here, can make a difference. So on this amp, the owner would like to keep reverb and tremolo, vibrato, as Leo called it in the amp, on both channels without the noise. So this is what we're going to do. Now, if you have a 68 Custom, you can make this change and have a, the amp that you thought you were getting only quiet. If you have the 65 reissue and you've always been jealous of the people with the 68s because they have reverb and trim on both channels, keep watching. This is how you do it. But that'll have to wait for the next video. I've got to order some tubes for this one, obviously. I've got other stuff in the in the queue. I'm not trying to string you along. I just wanted to do an initial evaluation of this and take the time to show you guys why the 68 Custom is noisy compared to the 65 reissue. And that it's not just like my opinion, man. It's science and shit. Thanks for watching.